France. In February 1974, the then Minister of Defence, Robert Gallet, declared in an interview that for 20 years the French had been studying UFOs. The results of the official studies were published, including the analysis of traces left by two UFOs in 1975 and 1981 in the south of France. An extract from the report states, The physical phenomenon exists, its place of origin, method of propulsion and behaviour are all beyond human comprehension. Since this, all information has virtually been embargoed by the French. Italy, since 1978, has listed its sighting of UFOs. These are the sightings listed in the 80s. The Swiss government has often said that it pays little credence to the UFOs. But since 1990, the Federal Military Department has given free access to a map showing civilian UFO sightings. No military sightings are recorded. On this map are two reports of sightings by military radar. The first on August the 2nd at 11 p.m. This UFO sighting lasted for a whole hour. It wasn't a meteorite as it moved in a zigzag fashion. It wasn't birds because of high speed and they ruled out aircraft. On the 13th of June 1993, Radar showed a UFO moving not horizontally, but vertically over a military base. With changes of altitude from 5,500 metres to 8,500 in a few minutes. The object was also capable of moving from 8,000 metres to 20,000 metres in a few seconds. The experts have also not commented on this photograph, which shows a UFO spotted by a Swiss Army Mirage. The photograph has been certified as genuine by computer analysis. In the Soviet Union, in 1990, a short while after the sightings in Belgium, General Igor Moltsev, Supreme Chief of the Soviet Air Force, admitted the existence of alien UFOs and extraterrestrial life forms. He said that some MiGs had observed a saucer of 100 to 200 meters in diameter, which was also able to stay motionless in the air and which performed extraordinary aerial maneuvers. Ground radar had confirmed this phenomenon. The Soviet defense chief had decided not to attack the UFO. He calculated such an attack would be pure folly. In 1991, KGB documents reported that an atomic base in Kaspusin Yar had sighted a UFO over the base for two hours in 1989. During its flight, the UFO emitted a ray of light which seemed to inspect the installation. In 1984, a UFO was seen in the Ukraine, above a missile base, but no intervention was possible. After the UFO left the airspace of the base, the guidance systems for the missiles used on the base were found to be inoperative. All the systems had to be reprogrammed. U.S. atomic bases have experienced similar systems malfunctions after UFO appearances. The Berlin Wall fell in 1989 and the official Soviet news agency TASS for the first time reported the landing of a UFO at Veronesh. Some children and numerous adults were witnesses. TASS reported that the Veronesh UFO had landed humanoids and robots. This episode was repeated three times. The witnesses were questioned by Western experts and were thought to be credible. Studies of traces left by the UFO revealed substances not known on Earth. The disk had the form of an egg. It was 15 meters high and 5 to 6 meters long. 
On the basis of the Earth's disturbance, it had to weigh at least 11 tons. Even in the US, UFO sightings are classified as top secret. However, the door has been opened a crack by the law on freedom of information brought in in 1970. This was a law supported by President Jimmy Carter, who saw a UFO in 1969 when he was a state governor, as you can see from this document. The law allows access to secret documents as long as it doesn't compromise national security. From these documents come important revelations. Some army veterans started to tell of their experiences. These veterans faced a barrage of abuse designed to discredit them. One of these was Wendell Stevens. In 1947, he was transferred from the Roswell base in New Mexico, where he had studied captured enemy aircraft, to Alaska. In Alaska, his squadron was detailed to reconnoiter the area. It soon became clear to Stevens that his real mission was to photograph UFOs sighted in the region. And my crew reported seeing a disc-shaped object sitting on the ice field that rose into the air and flew away as they approached it. Now, for us to launch a B-29 in Alaska, it took a field of equipment bigger than the B-29, heaters, power units, supply, uh, lubricating units, gasoline units, everything, to get one B-29 airborne in, in Arctic airspace. It would take us several hours to get it ready to go. Here's an object that's sitting on the ice field with no support equipment that jumps into the air and flies away and leaves nothing behind it. Now that was, in our view, was an impossibility because we, there's no way we could approach anything like that. Then a, a report came in of seeing one emerge from below the water, sit on the water from a surface of the water from rise into the air, and then zip off flying away. Another one at another time was reported to have descended into the water and disappeared. None of our aircraft could do any of that. Another important case is that of the then Lieutenant Graham Bethune during a 1951 flight from England to the US on a C-54 transport. The incident was confirmed by the whole crew. We began to see lights. There was a pattern of lights on the water, right on the water. And the size of this pattern of lights were really disturbing because it looked like many ships or aircraft carriers or what have you tied up and maybe a ring of lights. So we didn't know what was going on. We passed over the guard ship, which is a weather ship, which reports the weather to us, any ships in the area and this type of thing. So there was no ships in the area. There was no activity in the northern lights or over allies. There was nothing plotted in the area, so it really, you know, we wonder, well, what are we seeing? Maybe they're doing some secret type of recovery or something in the water. The, the next thing we saw was like a, a old, small halo about 25 miles away. That halo came to us like that, that 25 miles that fast. And, of course, uh, I disengaged the autopilot because the size of this thing, we couldn't see anything else out of the cockpit except that craft. And, and when I started to push the nose over to go under, uh, it stopped about 15 degrees off the bow, about 200 feet below us, maybe 1,500 feet out in front of us. And at that time, it was above the horizon. At night, you know, it's very difficult to see anything, but we could see, we could see the dome. We could see it was a dome-shaped ship. We could see roughly the size of it. Then, immediately, it pulled away about five miles away on a, at an angle and sat there and flew with us. This is the official report of the episode. In another case, in 1954, Army pilot Mel Noel was part of a squadron asked to film UFOs in the skies over the USA. Their film sequences of UFOs were shown at the base we were shown in the, somewhere in the area of 600 still photographs and a fair quantity of gun camera film that had been 
explosion just coincidentally with uh, with the sighting. Soon the squadron sighted five objects without managing to film them. It was five days later. We ran into either the same or another five. And at that time, we, we felt we succeeded in uh, getting them on the film. And approximately, I think it was a week after that, we ran into a total of 16 of the things. And we were having, at that point, we were having some relatively severe psychological problems. These were pilots in their early 20s, defenseless in the face of the UFOs. While they were observing them, something incredible happened. In their headphones, they heard a voice which said in English that they'd come in peace, but they were worried about what man was doing and that the voice they were hearing was not a hallucination. Their purpose of being here was to uh, dissuade some of the influence. They, they made refer reference to nuclear uh, development by man and the problems that would be created and had been created from it. And uh, it's, uh, at, at the age of 21, it, uh, it placed us in severe quandary of questioning and capability and opposing side ego and, and experience, but um, it, there was no humor. I mean, it was not fun at all. Here we have some official documents which are now being made public. General Nathan Twining prepared a study on UFOs in 1947 for Chief of the Staff of the Pentagon, George Shulgan. It contains the chilling conclusion that based on the evidence at the time that UFOs are real, that they're capable of extraordinary flight with amazing changes of direction, which made the writers think they must be guided by some alien intelligence. They were even seen to fly in formation and that their origin and technology were unknown. This 1947 document is now in the public domain. One of the great unsolved mysteries is the question of alien remains from one of these objects. From the many statements, it would seem that in 1947 near Roswell, New Mexico, one or more saucers or disks had crashed, perhaps because of local experiments with electromagnetic radiation. Mac Brazell, a farmer, harvested some strange materials and took them to the airbase at Roswell. They included unknown materials with writing on them, similar to hieroglyphics. The base commander examined them, and in a press release, declared them to be the remains of a recovered UFO. A few hours later, General Ramey, under orders from the Pentagon, denied the find and said the debris was the remains of a weather balloon. Roswell is a much discussed incident. The official documents in 1947 have the handwritten notes of FBI Chief J. Edgar Hoover. On them it says, the FBI must have access to the recovered UFO. Another thorny question has been, were alien corpses recovered from the crashed spacecraft? An internal memo from an FBI operative to his chief, J. Edgar Hoover, indicates that they were in possession of the debris of three flying saucers, each one with the remains of a small humanoid dressed in a silver suit. This document was released in 1983 and its contents confirmed by Professor Robert Saarbacher. He was directly involved in the UFO research project in the 40s. Saarbacher writes, the UFO was constructed of a light and resistant material. The humanoids had internal organs similar to insects. A hoax? Many analysts think not. But why is it all kept so secret? Was it to make sure that there was no public panic? With the US government afraid to admit that they were powerless in the face of a UFO menace? Perhaps they wanted to gain technological advantage from recovered materials. Whatever the reasons in 1947, a massive cover-up operation began. A number of supposed research projects were set up to calm public opinion and create confusion about the phenomenon 
by means of disinformation. They were codenamed Grudge, Sign and Blue Book. The real research took place under the greatest secrecy within the project Majestic 12, a project run by Professor Van der Vaar Bush, now dramatized in the UFO series Dark Skies. This document from Majestic 12 was donated anonymously to a researcher in 1984. It is a memo from President Eisenhower. It states that on the 7th of July 1947, a UFO came to Roswell with a humanoid on board, but it had been reported to the press that it was merely a weather balloon. Many say that the Eisenhower note is a fake. This document from 1950 would seem to question that view. The Canadian engineer, Wilbur Smith, indicates to his government that the subject of UFOs is more secret than the atomic bomb. A group led by Professor Bush have been asked to carry out a research project called Majestic 12. Since that time, many incidents have occurred, including a possible alien landing at Fort Dix, which included alien casualties. And in 1993, an alien craft may have disabled the nuclear arsenal at Manzano in the former Soviet Union. With these spectacular video pictures of a UFO, we conclude this part of UFOs, The Complete Truth. These are genuine pictures. UFOs exist, but many questions remain as to their origin, purpose, and the intelligence that guides them. Questions that we will deal with in the later three parts of our investigation. Cosmic Watergate, ancient astronauts, and ultra-secrets. Watch them and make up your own mind.